winning Survivor is an experience like no other. I wanted to just try to disprove the saying that nice guys finish last. I was like, man, I'm going all the way. How did I manage to win? And that instant fame changes everything. I think my MySpace page shot up like 5,000 friends or something on that one day. The women are definitely more attracted to me now that I've been on TV. TV Guide Network went across the country to catch up with every sole survivor, from the contestants you love to the winners you love to hate. <laughs> from the boxing ring to the Hollywood club, we'll reveal what really happens once the million dollar check is cashed and island life is just a memory. I've been traveling, seeing the world. It's unbelievable how amazing our lives are. This is Survivor Millionaires, Where Are They Now? What's up, everyone? I'm Jenna Marasco, winner of Survivor Amazon, and this is Survivor Millionaires, Where Are They Now? I'm coming to you from the Empire Hotel in New York City. Over the next hour, we'll reveal what's going on with every Survivor winner. In just a bit, we'll tell you what's new with troubled season one champ, Richard Hatch. But first, it's the most recent winner, JT, from Survivor Token Cheese. Welcome to the club, JT. I'm very happy the way the show turned out, and obviously I'm very happy to have a million dollars. Despite becoming a millionaire in the second unanimous Survivor vote, this cattle rancher from Alabama plans on staying true to his roots. I'm going to keep working, doing what I do, and support myself uh, by managing a cattle ranch and hopefully use this money and invest it properly and uh, set up college funds for all my nieces and nephews. JT says his friendship with his tribe mate, Stephen, will play a big part in his future plans. I'm looking forward to, to working with Stephen on down the road, maybe. Be nice if we had a, uh, another shot at a, a Survivor. JT was, I think, one, maybe one of the best Survivor players, and certainly, I think, one of the best Survivor winners you could have. I just thought JT just deserved it. He put, his, put everything out there for that game. And it's not just his tribe mates who are fans of this down-home guy. The women are definitely uh, more attracted to me now that I've been on TV. It seems like there's been times I couldn't find a girl to go to dinner with, and now I don't think I'll have that. I don't imagine I'd have that problem. Poverty Shallow came in sixth place in the Cook Islands, but two years later she returned to the series and went all the way to the top, winning fans versus favorites in a 5-3 to three vote. Winning that season was a really big deal for me. Everything just kind of hit me all at once right after I won, and it was just one thing after another after another. People were calling me, and I think my MySpace page shot up like 5,000 friends or something on that one day. Surprisingly, poverty hasn't dipped too deep into her winnings. I haven't spent that much money. I've spent most of it on traveling. I took a trip to Peru, so I want to go down to Brazil and Chile and those places. I, everywhere. I just want to go everywhere. In addition to globe trotting, she is dedicated to teaching punches and crunches with her boxing charity, Knockouts for Girls. Knock, knock. <laughs> I started boxing when I first moved out to LA and I was competing in matches and it was just a good supportive group of girls that we were boxing with and I was like, God, we should do something with this. So I got involved with the charity and donated 50 grand of, of my winnings to Knockouts for Girls. We teach these little girls how to, you know, throw punches and spar, but we want to do it safely so they're not running around beating each other up on the streets, you know, so we teach them the skills that they need to defend themselves. Take a break. <laughs> Whoa. But with her busy schedule, there is one thing poverty probably won't do, another survivor. A lot of people have asked me if I would do it a third time, and I just, I don't think so. I say I wouldn't go. It's so miserable. It's awful. It's just so dirty and gross. <laughs> but her future goals do include some grit. My dream job would be a combination of Brooke Burke's Wild On show mixed with uh, Micro's Dirty Jobs. I just want to travel around the world and explore and meet people and get dirty and have fun. Since I played the game, you know, I've actually had the, uh, the luxury of going back to a normal life. Aside from a very public wedding at the Daytona 500 in 2005, Survivor Vanuatu winner Chris Doherty has gone back to being the same hard-working private man he used to be. I still work at my job for the Ohio Department of Transportation. Still live, 
in the same place on the same property. Yeah, things changed a little bit. I won a million bucks, so I did build a new house there. As soon as I won the game, I did go out and I bought me a Harley. It's something I'd probably wanted since I was 16 or 17. Um, was never financially secure enough to do so. So, you know, that, that was my first big purchase. If you're out on the road on a Harley, you're free. Chris is also all about conserving nature. We got an exclusive tour around his Ohio Wetlands Preserve along with his friends and fellow Vanuatu castmates, Chad and Julie. Julie's gonna go swimming here in a minute after I push her in. I brought you here to a place where my dad has a, uh, we have a family business and it's an excavation business and uh, my dad builds wetlands. And, and what there is is there's soil and water conservation departments throughout the United States in each state. This is nature. The government funds for people that want to donate land to programs to preserve the wildlife, to preserve our soils and our waters. And Chris has no plans of leaving his hometown anytime soon. My plans for the future are to uh, put in another 10 or 12 years with the state of Ohio and retire and travel and do nothing. Survivor Outback's Tina Wesson has been living a laid-back life since being voted the first alpha female in the show's history. Since Survivor, my life hasn't really changed. We bought a ranch-style mountain house in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we overlook a beautiful lake. We sit up on a mountaintop. These days, the country girl is an advocate of adoption, as well as a member of the Evangelical Free Church and the Outstanding Young Women of America. She's also telling her personal story through her book entitled, Outlive, Outlaugh, Outlove. Vesepia Towery Robinson's life hasn't slowed down a bit since she conquered the islands of Marquesas. The 43-year-old season four champ is living a simple yet busy life with her family back in Northern California. <laughs> Survivor changed my life very little. And I say that because my husband and I both chose to not to allow it to change our life. I mean, I still shop at Walmart. Vesepia never shied away from TV. She landed her own local show called Survivor Chasers. In addition, she also writes online columns and helps inspire others through motivational speaking. It's been a really, really good ride. We will see you on the island. Peace out. When I'm in a game, I use what resources I have available to play the game and win, and, and I did. There has never been another winner like Richard Hatch. He was the first to get naked in the game, and he didn't have peanut butter as an incentive. The heat wasn't a problem either. I just didn't wear clothes. After gaining fame in 2000 as the original Soul Survivor, Richard took to the airwaves as a radio personality, hosted Survivor Live, and became an infamous reality celebrity. Almost entirely through the first season, I thought I would be the winner, didn't you? Hatch returned to the game for the 2004 All-Stars edition. In Survivor All-Stars, I did expect to get called back. I mean, how could they do an All-Star version without me? I consider myself one of the most ethical and moral people I know, and uh, I'm very, very happy and comfortable with who I am. But the government disagreed. In January 2005, it was reported that Hatch did not pay taxes on his Survivor winnings or subsequent appearance fees. And in May 2006, he was sentenced to 51 months in prison for tax evasion. In May 2009, Richard was released from jail early, reportedly for good behavior. Come on, it's a game. I didn't get life lessons from the game. <laughs> Later in the show, I'll let you in on some of the crazy things I've been up to since winning Survivor. But up next... When I came back after winning, it was like I left as Mr. Crowley and came back as Brad Pitt. We'll head to Maine with Survivor Gabon winner Bob Crowley to find out how he's handling the wave of fame. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs>